During the weekend, SpaceX accomplished a remarkable achievement by launching the Starship rocket for the second time and propelling it into space. While many are still scrutinizing and fervently discussing the tremendous success of the second launch, Elon Musk surprisingly disclosed the new launch date for the upcoming Starship flight. It's genuinely extraordinary to have such an early launch schedule. So, when is the next flight scheduled? What prerequisites does SpaceX need to fulfill for the Starship launch to be authorized? Let's explore these questions in today's episode of Spaceverse. Join us as we delve into the latest space missions, cutting-edge technology, and captivating astronomical discoveries. Whether you're a seasoned space enthusiast or just launching into the cosmic odyssey, our channel is your portal to the infinite mysteries of outer space. Subscribe now for a front row seat to the cosmos, where every video is a ticket to the ultimate adventure in the spaceverse. Let's momentarily set aside the uproar caused by the Starship explosion, currently creating a stir among the rocket enthusiast community. What truly captures attention is a significant announcement from SpaceX's CEO. We might be in for another celebration during this year-end holiday season. Isn't that intriguing? Just one day after the conclusion of the second Starship launch, Elon Musk, the company's founder and CEO, declared that the third Starship vehicle should be ready for flight in three to four weeks. This implies technical readiness just before Christmas. Honestly, this announcement is astonishing. The first and second Starship launches still feel like recent events in my mind and yet there's already a third launch scheduled. This is feasible due to the proven stability of the pad structure, enabling a significant reduction in preparation time compared to the second launch. SpaceX always maintains readiness for a new launch. Elon Musk underscored this in a tweet, stating, there are three ships in final production in the high bay. As observed from the highway, there are three Starship prototypes, Ship 30, Ship 31, and Ship 32. These spacecrafts are undergoing meticulous preparations, laying the groundwork for upcoming missions. Ship 30 is expected to undergo its first cryogenic test in Massey's in the next few days. Simultaneously, the orbital flight test 3 of 3 will follow, featuring Ship 28 and Booster 10. Notably, Booster 10 has already passed pivotal testing and anticipates a static fire test once the orbital launch mount is prepared. I predict Booster 10 will be positioned at the OLM within the next two weeks. SpaceX efficiently placed it on the engine installation stand in the Mi Bay for further preparations. Additionally, SpaceX is ready to initiate testing with Ship 28, using existing test stands without the need for suborbital pad preparations. Ship 28 has completed crucial installations, with its heat shield tiles notably more robust than those on Ship 25 from the recent flight. However, hardware readiness doesn't guarantee an immediate third flight. It hinges on the government regulatory agency the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA for short. Following the explosions during Saturday's flight over the Gulf of Mexico, Starship was grounded. The resumption of Starship Super Heavy vehicle flights hinges on the FAA's determination that any system, process, or procedure linked to the mishap poses no threat to public safety. SpaceX is obligated to undergo legal procedures to guarantee compliance and safety before proceeding with launches. The FAA's meticulous review process will depend on ongoing impacts and studies at the Starbase facility. The conclusion of this process is uncertain, and it has just commenced. SpaceX operates differently from traditional aerospace companies. It doesn't take years to produce a single prototype with meticulously certified and inventoried components. Instead, SpaceX is in a continuous transition from one prototype to another each iteration building on the results of previous tests with rapid and ongoing changes to any component or system requiring attention. While this approach is effective for swift advancements, it doesn't align with regulatory bodies seeking meticulous attention to every aspect of vehicle development. The FAA, as the agency granting licenses for rocket launches in the US or by US companies, is primarily concerned with the safety of people and property on the ground and in adjacent waters. Each rocket launch presently necessitates a launch readiness assessment, with the expectation that each test flight surpasses the success of a landing failure with high lethality. For SpaceX to achieve a prompt third Starship launch, they must persuade the FAA that the launch poses minimal danger to lives or property beyond SpaceX's jurisdiction, as they successfully did after the April test flight. In response to the issues encountered in Saturday's launch, SpaceX will compile a list of corrective actions. 
The FAA will scrutinize this list and ensure that SpaceX completes all actions related to public safety before granting a new commercial launch license for the third Starship test flight. FAA regulations mandate that companies with reusable launch vehicle licenses, such as SpaceX's Starship, adhere to an anticipated casualty limit for the uninvolved public, set at no more than 0.00 those for a one per launch or one casualty per 10,000 launches. The individual risk cannot surpass one in a million, which is a more stringent requirement than NASA's safety analysis for crewed flights. NASA appears to accept the risk of a total crew loss at 1 in 270, a stipulation for commercial crew contracts. Another FAA concern is the flight termination system, crucial for preventing flights from deviating beyond the permitted area. It appears that this might not be a hindrance for the third Starship launch anymore. With the second Starship launch, they seemingly tested this system effectively as the rocket deviated off course and self-destructed as part of the process. SpaceX needs to not only meet TAF AA requirements, but also obtain approval from U.S. fish and wildlife officials. A significant upgrade that drew the attention of these officials was SpaceX's new water deluge system. Following the first launch, the agency's biologists were reportedly surprised that SpaceX lacked flame suppression technology like this for Starship. Such systems, an industry and space agency standard, are designed to dissipate heat and noise generated by a rocket. SpaceX's new system involves flooding 358,000 gallons of water from ground tanks into steel plates, releasing them through holes in the plating. Elon Musk described it in April as a massive super-strong showerhead pointing up. In August, elevated levels of chromium, zinc, and other components were found in the water. However, subsequent tests revealed lower concentrations of these metals signaling positive improvement by SpaceX. Evaluations of this second test flight will determine the effectiveness of SpaceX's new system in reducing debris and pollution. It is evident that not having such a system is not a viable option. According to Phil Metzger, a planetary scientist at the University of Central Florida specializing in space economics, steel is a ductile material, unlike concrete, which is brittle. Metzger explains that steel cannot fracture in the same way concrete did during the initial launch. The concrete fractured, and the resulting pressure forced hot gas through the cracks, putting the launch pad under tension and causing it to explode, akin to a small volcanic eruption. However, Metzger is optimistic that the new deluge system will resolve this issue, eliminating significant risks of debris or contaminated deluge water. While precise inspection results are pending, the upgraded launch pad's excellent performance suggests less damage for U.S. fish and wildlife officials to investigate this time. Moving forward, SpaceX's focus should be on advancing the production and testing of vehicle hardware and addressing any remaining issues. Presently, SpaceX faces fewer obstacles compared to the first Starship test launch, having nearly achieved their immediate goals, particularly in addressing environmental concerns, a key factor causing extended delays between launches. Government agencies might approve Starship for launch sooner than anticipated. Although FAA approvals delayed the Starship program by several months, the company finds the requirements regarding hardware changes and environmental impact quite manageable. Elon Musk expressed gratitude for the rapid approval of a complex launch license from the FAA and NFW News in a post-launch tweet, highlighting an improved relationship with these agencies. The eagerly anticipated third Starship flight is on the horizon. And that's it. Thank you for joining us in the Spaceverse. If you enjoyed our cosmic journey, don't forget to hit the like button, share with fellow space enthusiasts, and subscribe for more interstellar content. Explore our playlist for a deep dive into the mysteries of the universe, and remember, the cosmos is infinite, and so are the possibilities. Until our next cosmic rendezvous, keep looking up, and may your curiosity reach the stars. Safe travels in the spaceverse.